When she transformed into a butterfly, the caterpillar spoke not of her beauty, but of her weirdness. They wanted her to change back to what she had always been, but then she had wings. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Yogita Chada, and as part of the Inspiring Ideas podcast team, I'm delighted to welcome you all to this inaugural episode of Inspiring Ideas, Inspiring Women series. And to all you incredible women out there, I wish you a happy International Women's Day. We have been waiting for this day as we embark on a new journey through this initiative, a global platform that brings together experiences of hard work, passion, courage, and from highly successful women leaders who inspire all women to set higher goals, rise above their hurdles, and fulfill their dreams. We bring to you path-breaking stories and aim to create a world of new possibilities, innovation and growth that fosters community support towards career and life. So here's to the first show that will make way for many. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Mother Sundara Rajan and Abhinav Raje, the rocking crew of Inspiring Ideas. Hi Madhu and Abhi, are you ready to get started? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yogita, that's a great introduction. And first thing I would like to just thank everyone. After we said that we're coming up with this show, the kind of support that we got from everyone and the love and affection and people have been writing, you know, comments to us. It's just fantastic. So thanks everyone. And we let, let's get the show started. Let me introduce the first guest for today. So the first guest, as you would have seen in my earlier teaser is Viba Sarin Prabhaka. Can we welcome her to the show, please. Hi, guys. Hi, Viba. Hey, Viba. How are you doing? Many times. I'm very well. Thank you so much. Hope you guys are doing fine. And uh, a very happy International Women's Day to everyone. And many congratulations to the Inspiring Idea team. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Viba, yes, uh, and you have worked in many, many multinational companies in very exciting roles. Uh, do you want to very quickly start with your life journey? Sure, Madhu. Uh, as I started my career, I, I didn't have a long-term view mapped out. I think that's how most of the people start. Um, however, looking back, you know, staying focused on doing uh, a great job in every single role that I did and not being hesitant uh, to change tracks uh, for the right role really paid off in the long run. And I would say I'm grateful and thankful for also being in the right place at the right time. Some of the luck factor uh, plays uh, a pivotal part as well, um, uh, you know, and it's, it was a lot of investment in terms of learning never stops. So I continued to invest in myself in terms of, you know, going to Wharton or London Business School, IMD, INSEAD. Uh, these were certain capsule courses that I did as I moved along in my career journey in various roles where I saw that these skills uh, were required uh, to do the best in what I was doing. And, you know, uh, that's how I was able to manage certain globally aligned roles um, in various organizations. So to summarize, you know, passion for working with people as the number one thing that I truly believe in uh, is what keeps me going. Uh, second is to build functions and teams from the scratch is my forte. Uh, last but not the least, uh, innovation, digital business transformation, um, and, you know, strategic growth for the business is something that truly excites me. That's in a nutshell about my journey so far. Okay, but that's a, that's a great summary. And uh, um, that's the reason I'm, I'm now curious to know, like, you're, you're so successful. When was that Eureka moment in your life when you found your purpose and your passion? Mm. So it's quite intriguing, Abhinav, and a great question. And well, it is very compelling. And, you know, one f 
feels the pressure, especially in the initial stages of one's career to find that one thing, you know, the thing that uh, you're supposed to love and do forever. You know, a big yes moment or a light bulb moment where you are able to find your purpose. Uh, but for me, on the contrary, uh, the way I would like to put it is um, it's quicker and a lot of fun uh, to focus instead, you know, on looking for what I call the little yeses. Right. Uh, there are so many possibilities um, and diversification of thoughts and skills, um, opportunities where one does not confine oneself to one passion only. Uh, while I agree, you know, the larger purpose in life has to be crystal clear. What is it that one really likes to do? Um, so for me, it is, you know, excelling in everything that I do. Um, I know I've found one when I can't stop thinking about uh, something exciting that I can do in future um, and, you know, eat that elephant piece by piece. Um, so my little yeses led me to um, into a wonderful serendipitous projects, people and places. Great. Vibha, thank you so much for sharing your very enriching journey. Let's move on to our next section, which will cover thoughts around understanding leadership, which is the core theme of our show today. Well, they say leadership is a series of behaviors rather than a role for heroes. Tell us, Vibha, how do you define leadership? Sure, and that's a great question, Yogita. And, you know, all of us are leaders in our own ways. All of you are, you know, working professionals, uh, worked for more than two decades as well, if we look at your profiles. So um, leadership for me, uh, it's a, a leader, you know, the role of a leader is to provide a clear vision and find a purpose together with the team, um, empower them and guide them you know, to successfully achieve that vision. Um, so that's how I summarize. It's all about the purpose and the vision. And you work along with your team to achieve that. Awesome. Viva, you've been going strength to strength and the results of your work are evidence of that. What do you think are the top three skills required to become a successful leader and more so in the current times that we are in? Sure, Yogita. Um, the current times has really made all of us rethink and reimagine and reinvent the way we work and live, right? Um, so there is no one panacea for, uh, you know, all the issues. And it's not just one thing, as I said, that, um, you know, uh, makes this vast ocean. But to summarize, and if I have to uh, just pick up the top three skills, especially in the current situation of COVID. Uh, the number one for me as a, a part of the senior management, running the organization, handling people, is maintaining the psychological safety. Yeah. So that is all about building a cohesive team, especially when we are working in a very hybrid environment where now slowly and gradually there is a trickle of physical work happening in the offices, but majorly it continues to be a remote work. And how one does that is through uh, constant engagement, effective communication, a lot of interpersonal skills and relationships that come into play. Uh, and how do you do that continuous talent development with gratitude? I think it only can happen with actively building trust. So the entire gamut of trust building and psychological safety when people are struggling personally and professionally in the current environment is number one for me. The second for me is how a leader navigates change quickly. You know, it's about speed as well as managing change which is happening i think in the last 10 decades the amount of change that has happened was never ever experienced before 
um, and you know, still you remain focused on the larger goal, along with all these changes uh, that are happening. And the third for me would be, uh, you know, how one remains culturally sensitive and emotionally aware. It's all about integrity, values, ethics, and intelligence uh, when it comes to emotional quotient or social quotient and you know how one really manages this entire stream of handling people getting them aligned to the larger goal and the purpose and getting the work done right i think that really sums up what you need uh, you know to be a true leader i mean just an amalgamation of uh, self analysis of course skill development and also i think uh, to add there is uh, sometimes a need for mentorship support in especially the early ages of your career and of course seizing the right opportunities with this let's move on to section 3 of our show where we would like to have an exchange of real life situations and scenarios so um in the early stages of your career uh, what was the spark what did you do right to you know make the management feel that you have that potential to grab um, a leadership role you know telling yourself that yes this is my moment to shine mm sure you're making me think a lot on a sunday morning and it's uh, <laughs> uh it's it's amazing to you know look back and uh, uh think about what were the things that i did and i'm you know really glad to share it if this helps even one person out there um and inspire uh but as i said you know in my career journey there was no one instance that i can point out which was a moment of epiphany or a sudden realization uh but a series of experiences and events uh you know which really helped me reach where i am today and you know at every stage and different phases of my career i was encouraged to be a better version of myself and that is the only competition i think we all need to worry about we, if we can be better from what we were yesterday is what i always keep in mind and i think the number one for me that really helped over a period of time which maybe the management was able to um, identify in me was working with people getting the work done in a very collaborative manner able to influence decision um you know uh, to meet the larger goals so uh, it was very encouraging to know if people reporting to me were uh, inspired and happy and they were able to do a job well and they were getting the uh, required mentorship coaching and guidance uh you know at very initial stages of my career and a uh, second thing that i i really consciously uh you know made an effort to invest in was um enhancing my own skills and knowledge through the various courses so i'll quickly um give an example which uh is not really um you know funny but there was a choice i had to upgrade my car or go for an executive uh, program at the London Business School because i was self sponsoring it right so uh, i didn't take long to decide that i should go uh, to do my course uh, and put all my hard on money there rather than upgrading the car <laughs> at that time uh, because uh, i could upgrade my car later right if i get into a position which uh, gives me more money to do that <laughs> so uh, these were the small things uh, which led to the bigger picture if i look back the wharton course that i did through royal bank of scotland it was sponsored by the organization because i was a part of the talent pool and i asked for it uh, believe me you don't get anything until you ask and all of us you know uh, we are quite shy especially women when it comes to negotiations and asking uh and i realized um that you know it was a big bold decision to ask but it wasn't that bad you know uh, because i was a part of the talent pool it actually got uh, i got the approval pretty smoothly and that's when i realized that one always has to ask so the second thing is investing in yourself right to 
prepare yourself for different roles, larger roles. Uh, the third thing I would say is get a coach. So I also got an executive coach in the first three years of my leadership roles, uh, which was very instrumental in helping me maneuver and guide through the challenges that I was facing in, you know, the changes and the transformation that was happening in my career. Uh, fourth, I would say is networking. For example, LinkedIn is an amazing platform where one can network, but, you know, all these courses that I did really helped me network with other participants from various industries. And, you know, uh, creating content, writing articles, sharing information and knowledge is how you reach out and connect to people who can uh, help you in your career journey. And this is a stretch, but I think it's worth the time and effort. Um, last but not the least, never be hesitant in taking risk and trying new things. I think all of it together is what really helped me Great. I think that makes a great story for our listeners to learn how important it is to carve your own path and lead the way, be it through self-motivation by just staying focused and owning your decisions. You know, as they say, there's no such thing as a bad decision. You just have to stand by your decision and make it right. And also not just wait for a natural career progression. You know, you've got to really work it out and earn your next level in your career. In fact, since we're talking of real life uh, stories and experiences, as I recall, when I moved from, you know, a supplier uh, company to a global giant corporate organization in a senior role, uh, you know, I thought my life was all set and I was now going to be on the customer side and it can't get better than this. But little did I know that it was the most challenging course of my career when I had to prove my worth every single day to management stakeholders as these leaders now were my internal customers, you know, and it was a question of sustaining with an indomitable spirit. And that's what I look up to you for, Vibha. I see that a large part of your career has been associated with risk management initiatives, you know, including strategy, control management, control framework, and cost saving through uh, digitization, as you mentioned. What a path breaking domain, isn't it? So share with us some challenges you faced working as a leader and how did you manage to overcome them to just keep going? Mm. Sure, uh, Yogita, uh, the challenges I would say <laughs> have been endless, but I think that's all the fun uh, mm. as well. So I can recall many instances uh, which were challenging or difficult situations where I actually felt as a woman, I had to work, you know, doubly hard um, or face the stereotypes, right? Let's, let's uh, you know, understand the fact that the term glass ceiling uh, came into existence some 40 years back. And the fact is that it still exists. Yeah. Uh, and as gender norms presume that women... Uh, you know, should be agreeable, warm, and nurturing, which comes very naturally. But when they violate uh, these norms, such as when they step up uh, to make a tough decision or promote themselves or have a strong opinion, you know, they are often um, penalized for that behavior, I would say, uh, in a way that men wouldn't be. Mm. So would you agree with that, Yogita? <laughs> Yes, I think uh, whatever said and done, uh, it's modern age and uh, it's not a man's world anymore. But yes, there is that bias that exists. I agree. Yeah. So I can share an example where in a leadership role, I had uh, proposed to break an age old norm. You know, this was an Indian corporate and I was assigned a task to expand the retail segment of the business, which was the front end customer facing vertical. Um, right. And I observed that for a particular role, uh, which is called an assayer, where the person actually tests and melts the metal and metal is gold in this case, which is quite precious. 
so i had observed that uh, you know there were no no single women in that particular role um, uh, which was customer facing so i wanted to hire a, a woman in that role because it was customer facing and i was wondering why a woman is not doing this uh, role and uh, you know all the men especially gave all the reasons why a woman cannot do that role including you know what if she gets burned while melting and testing the metal or it's quite heavy you know 2 kgs um but my answer to that was you know the pain will be the same if a man gets burned or a woman or a 2 kgs weight is actually nothing uh, as a mother i could tell them that a baby weighs uh, you know about more than 2 kgs at the time of the birth um so there are many factors whether it's cultural or societal factors which really confine women to do certain roles and the challenges that they face while working the second is about you know individual inhibitions as well so i proposed to the board that let's experiment and let's train one of the women in in this particular role internally uh definitely she took longer in training as compared to somebody who comes with that chemistry background that was required to do that role uh, instead of one month she took two months but the results were quite positive and very very overwhelming where she cleared all the assessments and i think that was the beginning of uh, the change that i was trying to drive without burning any bridges and proving it true uh you know an experiment and a pilot uh that i proposed and once it was successful you know it was very easy to replicate and then start training more women in that role again to summarize you know there are four five things that i always keep in mind while experiencing any challenges uh you know especially as a a, a woman leader in in the organization the first is know your true north be very clear in your head in terms of what is it that you really want what is your forte is it operations finance data transformation and be an expert in that so that you automatically get the confidence to uh, you know present your views and um, really uh, have a seat on the table right second we talked about is of course networking both inside and outside the organization one of the point that i would like to add is you know seek feedback how can it's a powerful tool and it opens up many possibilities of keeping learning in the process um lastly i would like to summarize that you know break out of the comfort zone uh this is the most limiting career move we all fall prey into um by staying in what we are doing following the norm uh staying comfortable in what we are doing um because of maybe fear of failure fear of judgment fear of unknown um it's easy to go with the flow but then we must keep you know storming the norm is how i put it we all know there was a study in uh, through the cornell university that women don't even apply for roles if even they are not able to meet one of the skills in the job description uh, but men you know don't even think like that they apply even if they uh, don't have that uh, experience right but it matches with maybe the entire scheme of thing so uh taking the plunge trusting yourself and stepping directly impacts our self esteem so that's how i would like to summarize i think these Maru, are these are these are absolutely gold right and we talked about a lot of things in, not just in particular about uh, you know particular to women it's it's also particular to anybody who is aspiring to be a leader uh this is so fabulous i think in in short i mean just wanted to share my experiences about what i think is um, 
if you want to move ahead from a normal leader to a transformational leader i see there are three things that you may have to keep in mind one is you have got the great pq which is passion quotient in terms of what you do and second is how well you are actually communicating uh, to the team which is the cq communication quotient and third obviously you test upon the team the psychological safety vibhata which is obviously thinking about more empathetic and getting into the emotional quotient aspect so if you are able to take care of all these three i'm sure you'll you'll soon become a transformational leader it's not just when it's about anyone who would want to become a leader and thanks for all the insights very very useful oh great uh, madhu those were golden nuggets as well the way you summarized uh, all three are great points thank you viba now i'm going to take the conversation which is can naturally progress into the next topic because i'm going to touch upon this age old debate about women can't have it all you know that perfect work life balance i mean does it even exist from my experience when i look back i'm reminded of enough and more sacrifices as well as the valuable personal support system i had to fall back on you know leaving my toddler boys at home and taking those early am flights with teary eyes sometimes and ensuring my meeting ends well in time to be back the same night and many such story stories of a multitasking working mother how do you strike a balance between a demanding career and family life sure yogita you have put it uh, so beautifully well that um, and honestly i too believe that there is no perfect work life balance right it doesn't exist so what's there for me is you know the work life choices that we make to find the right balance so what really works for me as my mantra um is the power of 3 m's you know this is something that i've coined myself um and uh, it's quite interesting and very very personal to me that i would like to share the first m for me is uh, my mother in law it can be mother or anyone who helps with your child when you are away at work and traveling as you just said you know it's not easy um so that's the first m right somebody you can trust completely with taking care of your family life and your children because that really takes away a lot of stress and not everybody is really fortunate and lucky to have that but uh, if you have or if you create one really value it and invest in it so that it really helps you doing a lot of other things so that's the first m the second m for me is the way i put it is the maid uh, all the helpers the cleaners the driver or the entire ecosystem of the bcp drp at home uh you know the business continuity planning and disaster recovery planning at home that i do it's all the um, helpers and we are lucky especially in india you know to to have that support system and i i tell um especially the new mothers or the new working women who got married in my team and otherwise it's worth spending to take this help so that's the second m uh the third m are the men in life whether it's your spouse or the partner or uh, your sponsors your bosses people who, whom you look up to professionally right so these are the three m's for me and um to summarize the overarching or the underlining factor of amazing women around you who who really support the cause whether they are your friends cousins a uh, family or professionally you know uh, that's what really completes me and strengthens me uh, because as i said no uh, person is can live like an island uh, it's it's a lot that it takes for a woman to be successful um, i think just to sum it up there are dreams and there are there is reality and then life happens for us women somewhere in between and to make that life happen Yes, we need to fall back on a support system that was beautifully described by you. Thank you, Vima. I believe as you make your way to the top, 
you know there comes a point in your career when it's not just about you but how you engage and empower others so i would like to ask what are the top things that you want to leave our listeners with in regard to the empowerment of people in particular empowering women sure you get uh, again a great question and um, as i think you know women empowerment is a vast subject it is a process or a journey and not really a product and you know it stems uh, from self respect uh, therefore in my view one must acquire empowerment themselves rather than have it given to them by someone else uh the number one for me and what i have experienced myself is to start with including them right giving them a voice or a seat on the table uh, where important decisions are being made um you know let them share their opinion and add value so inclusivity and inclusion uh is where it all starts uh number 2 for me would be investing in them because that's what really worked for me and that's what i really am conscious when uh i see a talent in my team how can i really invest further help the individual you know in terms of skill or knowledge enhancement coaching them mentoring them nurturing them guiding them and hand holding them uh, to try something new and learn something uh lastly you know it's simply being there it's nothing complex you know be there in terms of um uh, as a woman one can understand the challenges much better uh, due to the stereotypes that we all face uh so certain life tips that i personally give them is you know be selfish it's actually okay to be selfish as the number one and i related to the analogy of the oxygen mask in an air- airplane uh that you know put on your oxygen mask first before helping others and that applies to every situation where you're dealing it personally with your child or at home or professionally um second is you know have a routine uh, take care of yourself further in terms of meditating going out for a walk and getting that fresh air exercising breathing i think it really makes one emotionally strong and divide responsibilities again you don't have to take it all on yourself and try to be a perfectionist ask for help ask for things it's absolutely okay um lastly you know define your work boundaries your team should know when do you start work especially now in such a crazy situation where we are trying to handle it all um uh, when you stop work and you are not ready to take phone calls when do you take your breaks it's absolutely okay to let your managers and the team know what your routine is and when you are available but exploring your own concept of empowerment and balance by cultivating the connections to seek support is is what my uh, you know thought around empowerment is it goes you know it's not a question of who is going to let me it is about who is going to stop me so thank you so much viba and um, without further delay i am anxiously waiting for some of the questions that our audiences have sent us and uh, you know the year gone by has been tough for uh, many of us and it has left us with many life lessons it has taught us to embrace uncertainty and change but we have to constantly innovate and reengineer using the best of our abilities so i will now hand over to abhi to go ahead with those questions for you thanks yogita uh, thanks for for sharing such amazing insights Uh, it's interesting once we uh, announced that you're going to be our first guest there so many people reached out to us you know either through linkedin social media platforms or sending us messages and asking us a lot of questions and i think the tough part for us was to pick up just four five questions for the session uh, so we could we picked up few questions some of the things we already covered here today but it'll be get, great to get your insights on them so the first question comes from sanaya nay and she's actually created a video for you so i'm just going to play this video now 
Hello, ma'am. Ma'am, I'm getting this great opportunity to ask one question from you. And ma'am, my question is that when sometimes the leaders take decision, so it happens that not all the employees support their decision. Some are in favor of that, and some are not in the favor of the decision. So at that moment, what are the qualities that uh, a leader should portray? Because if he is not going to listen to other people who are not in favor, they are going to think that uh, the leader is being partial with the other with other employees who are uh, supporting him for the decision. And like at that moment, what skills uh, should a uh, should a, de a leader demonstrate so that it can be very clear, uh, you know, so that the conflict situation cannot be created between the employees. Wonderful. Great question and a very tough situation. I'm sure all of us uh, would have experienced that in our careers. Uh, the first thing that I'll do in such a situation when I look back, transparency and honesty, right? Coupled with a clear communication while she herself mentioned the word listening. So once as a leader, you hear both the sides, be very patient and understanding in, uh, you know, listening to the ones who are, whom uh, have not given the entire buy-in, right? Uh, it's important to know the compelling need and the reason behind why they are thinking like that. And then slowly and gradually telling them the bigger picture of why something that you wish to do as a leader for the organization because it will never be personal um, and once people understand the larger picture and the why of something that one is trying to drive which leads to achieving the larger goal most of the time people are quite understanding in accepting any change that's that's a fantastic uh, answer uh, we, were, we got a similar question here. This is coming from Rajbis. I think you've already covered this, but uh, Madhu or Yogita, if you want to add something more. So Rajbis' question is, what are the important leadership qualities that you should have to deliver quality product or service while maintaining a good relationship with the team? It's a very similar question. Mm. I think empathy is, is what I would uh, add to this and, and trying to understand. It uh, comes back to that basics, right? So the CQs, the PQs, and the EQs, uh, communicating that vision and having that empathy. And, and when someone says that, no, you have given that role to this person. I was expecting that. No, 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 this is not good. Uh, somebody told me. This, the one question that you may ask is, how do you know? And that's, that's a typical Dale Carnegie masterclass 101 question. And you know, how do you know? Because once you ask that question, they go into that introspective mode. Many a time, it's very, very difficult for them to understand as to why and what prompted them to say that question, right? And then, then they eventually come back and understand, okay, we are actually doing it for the bigger purpose and the bigger picture, which we did uh, talk about. And then eventually, it, it's, it's, a, it's a case where they accept it and move on. And, but ultimately, keep them in mind because I'll, you have to satisfy their goals and their aspirations at some point in time down the way. That's great. Fantastic, Madhu. Uh, moving on to the next question. Now, there are, there's a question asked by Priyadarshini and Shweta. They're quite similar. They talk about the mindset. Uh, so Priyadarshini's question is, how do you build a mental strength to overcome challenges as a leader? And Shweta's question is, it's all about facing your fears. More easy said than done. So they wanted to know your views on it. Yeah. Um, again, it's so uh, natural and normal you know, to have butterflies in the stomach and face the fears of unknown and uh, judgment and failure. Uh, but, you know, there was a study I was reading that the fear of failure is also the biggest motivator for people to come out with their best versions and be successful. Um, it's, it's quite contradictory, but realizing it itself is the first accomplishment is what i'll say to move on yeah if you are aware uh, that itself is a big stepping stone in terms of moving ahead then it's just a matter of finding a way you know if you really believe in the cause and if you want to move ahead uh, uh, there are these driving forces that compel you to uh, you know take the plunge and 
it's it's also about the purpose is if that's what one really wants you know everything is driven around that so the mental strength for me personally really comes with uh, you know some me time that i get when i'm meditating or working out and that's my biggest motivator as i had mentioned earlier as well one has to find their own uh, ways and tricks what really works for them uh, but clarity of you know what is it that you are stepping into what is it that you are struggling with in terms of uh, building your mental mental strength and what is the challenge it's it's all about thinking around it finding a way and then moving on when you personally believe and relate to the cause uh, solutions come very easily uh, that's what i do when i'm facing such things and happy to you know hear from abhi or yogita what, what is it that works for them yeah so i think uh, beba it's very interesting and just to add like one thing which is also critical is you just have to do it i remember about one year ago when i and madhu called me up and like let's start a podcast i'm like oh we had so many fears in our head like will people be listening to it people will be judging us or what not and then like how much we have to prepare for it and then we decided let's just do it and we'll see how things go from there so i think that's also very critical and good we did it because now we have done published on 2025 episodes in last 6 months or so and we're just believing and you know trying it out and you can always improve absolutely and ironically uh, what we what uh, you notice is uh, the post that i made today in linkedin failure is any day better than making an excuse so in that way uh, you know you're going to win essentially and, and to your point about meditating i think that helps anyone to come up and understand what's their inner calling their purpose and that drives and people especially leaders find their way after they find their inner purpose they're going to just find their way to make things happen fantastic all right okay moving to our last question now this is from anjana and before i read this question like she sent me a message saying that hey vibha madam recently i got an opportunity to see your webinar on the topic digital transformation and innovation where you have said changing the way we do business along with the change in environment is the key this pandemic has proved it so i just want to know which are the success factors for creating a digital transformation strategy to grow a business wonderful question i really love it and i'm amazed by the you know the time and effort spent uh, in even uh, going through my webinar before the session so thank you so much anjana and a great question uh, it's a very simple answer for me because this is a topic very very dear to my heart uh, the first factor that one needs to look at uh, before creating a digital transformation strategy is how it is adding value to the end customer experience and the stakeholders it has to positively change the end customer experience otherwise it's just not worth it because at the end every business is to delight the customer right whether up these are internal customers external customers stakeholders whatever business you are in so that's number 1 uh number 2 is simplification how it's making anyone's life better the person who's doing that job or someone who's receiving it in the entire gamut of the supply chain and finally the end product you know the entire simplification journey which a digital transformation should lead to otherwise again it's not worth it um the third is how it drives profits for the company because at the end every business is there to um make profits and earn some revenue and not really for charity so any digital transformation strategy should definitely have an uptick on those factors and the revenue and the profitability so these are the top 3 things i keep in mind when we are driving any digital strategy that's fantastic that was the last question i'll hand it back to yogita thank you viba and thanks abhi i think we've had a fantastic round here and uh, let's come to the final question now 
where I'm going to toy this back to the entire uh, purpose of this show, which is to inspire. So my final question here, Viva, is that how can people, especially women, find purpose and continue to stay in it through their professional life or career and get inspired to achieve their dreams? Wow. Uh, that's like an amazing last question to end this session. And my personal advice to other uh, women starting their career journey towards leadership roles, especially, or finding the purpose uh, is to clearly define what success looks like uh, for you and then go for it. Uh, it's different for everybody, right? So it's yeah. having that clarity and the definition of what is your purpose and you have to find it yourself, right? So if you have the clarity on your aspirations and you really love what you are doing, uh, you will be successful in achieving your dreams and the purpose. So the way I define it, Yogita, is uh, success uh, is not the key factor to happiness. It's the happiness which is the key factor to success. Um, and, you know, that's how you achieve your dreams and goals if you are happy in doing what you are doing. So three things. Now, number one, as I just said, it's the clarity on your aspirations and purpose that you have to find yourself. Uh, the number two is there is no substitute for hard work uh, and smart work, which also includes building network, finding sponsors, upskilling, and the continuous hunger to become the best version of yourself. This is a continuous process that one has to follow. Uh, last but not the least, do not hesitate to storm the norm and taking the risk to go uh, out of your comfort zone uh, to trying something new and moving on in terms of, you know, your learning journey. So that's uh, how I'll summarize. And those are the three top things, uh, you know, to drive success and finding your purpose. Awesome. So thank you once again, Vibha. I have totally enjoyed chatting up with you today and uh, I truly appreciate your time. Thank you for leaving us mesmerized with your inspiring journey. To conclude, I would like to say that, you know, whether you're forging your own path or following the footsteps of those ahead of us, these trailblazers, the innovators, explorers and disruptors can encourage motivate and push us to reach new heights, both in business and in life. I'm reminded of this powerful quote by Hillary Clinton, which says, to all the little girls who are watching this, never doubt that you are valuable and powerful and deserving of every chance and opportunity in the world to pursue and achieve your dreams. So thank you everyone for joining us and stay tuned, you lovely people. Inspiring ideas, inspiring women will be back soon. Till then, stay happy and be safe and just be awesome. Thank you, everyone. Great. Thank you so much, guys. And more power to all of you and all the women out there, especially on the International Women's Day. I think Inspiring Ideas is doing a wonderful job, especially along with the full-time jobs that you guys are already doing. So um, all the very best for this initiative and the future episodes. And thank you for having me. It has been a true pleasure. Thank you so much, Rupa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Yogita.